Hi, Misha here, and this week I'm traveling, well, the week I'm recording this, not the week you're probably seeing this, and bringing some guns out to get a couple of range trips in. First off, I want to say, really glad we went shooting yesterday, not today. The weather was much nicer, as you'll soon see. But, you know, in the last year, right about a year ago, we kind of revisited the original Tavor Tar-21 and the Simato SAR with the 18 inch barrel and about half a year ago we revisited the FN F2000 FS2000 and we've been covering the Springfield Croatian inspired Hellion or VHS2 all of these are bull pups of course and we've done many videos on the Steyr AUG Steyr AUG also a bull pup of course one of the very first along with the FAMAS which unfortunately no one's loaned us one so we haven't done a video on it anyway there's one we have not revisited in a while we did talk about these when they came out back in 2016 and you've seen mine before many times but Fox has not and he's been on me to bring this out so let's put it in his hands get his very first impressions and then we'll run some more rounds through this old gun. So Fox has been on me to bring out a Tavor or two. And we actually brought it out a time or two ago. But because of circumstances, we weren't able to even get it out of the bag. So pretty day today. You're finally going to get a shooter Tavor. Before you do shoot though, uh, what do you think? Well, it's um, it does seem maybe a little bit more heavier than um, the previous bull pups. Of course, it could just be because it's... Man, I, it's hard to put this into words. <laughs> it's very tanky. It's almost very toy. -y. Like it, it, I mean, if you would have showed me this 15 years ago, I would have thought it was like an airsoft gun or a paintball gun. Um, I don't know, man. Um, try the trigger out. Charge it and try the trigger. Very stiff to charge, uh, which is good. Yeah. I may like that trigger more than the Hellion. But the overall feel of the gun, it is so compact. I feel like this is like you're, you almost have an Uzi shouldered at this point. Like it is so compact. I really do like everything in a small package. This would be great for if you were going, you know, in a home defense situation. Well, probably wouldn't, two, two, three. But it is very small. You could get around a lot of corners with this. I, I guess I'm going to have to shoot it to get much more out of it. It is a very unique feel. I've never felt anything like it. Well, let's do it to it. So Fox's very first shots out of the X-95. Very nice. So back to me here on this not near as nice day outside. And, um, yeah. I know what he was saying about this plastic feel. Because I noticed that when the original SARs came out back in 2013. It's not a bad feel, but it doesn't feel like an AUG or even an FS2000. I think part of it's the texture. Part of it's some very obvious mold lines. You can tell this was designed for mass issuance and budgeting and all that that's not to say it's a bad thing not at all but there's something just different and unfortunately it really is impossible to convey on a uh, camera you just you gotta feel it so i do understand what uh, what he was driving at there though so this may not look exactly like yours and i'm sure most of you know how i've modified mine but let's cover it. Although first, if you could, please like, share, and subscribe. And more importantly, if you'd like to help out the channel, please go over and check out the Patreon page. Just a buck and up a month, it really does help quite a bit. For example, right now we're working on our next Q&A and some other fun projects. Plus we just put some blooper outtakes from yesterday's range trip on the Patreon for people to laugh at and mock us for. Anyway, yeah, my personal X95 here. All right, let's dust off the X95. Hell 
held open. Okay, so the original military gun. As most of you know, in the beginning when the TAR-21 started out, you know, 2001 when the earliest ones kind of appear, 2003 testing, 2006 it went into adoption, the full-size TAR-21 had an 18-inch barrel, giving it an overall length as a bullpup of 28, 29 inches. There was also the CTAR, or compact or carbine TAR-21, which went to a roughly 15-inch barrel, and that dropped down to a little over 25 inches. And then there was the micro TAR-21, or MTAR-21, which was the submachine gun size variant, kind of like the micro Galil. It had a 13-inch barrel. So why am I, you know, rambling about this? Well, that's where the X-95, of course, comes from. They intended for the TAR-21, 18-inch, to be the standard infantry, and the CTAR to kind of be for tank crews and you know, co the compact carbine, and the MTAR, the micro, to be for special forces, CQB, all that good stuff. But turns out, not long after they started you know, putting the CTAR and the TAR into the IDF, the MTAR, the micro, became very popular and it received several updates and improvements to both make it more ergonomic and to make it slimmer, you know, somewhat lighter, things like that. And thus, the X-95 evolved from the Micro Tavor. I'd almost call the original X-95 just a, a Micro Tavor variant. As is famously known in November of 2009, just a few years after the Tavor was adopted, it was actually announced that the X-95 would be the new IDF standard issue rifle, not the 18-inch. So a 13-inch gun with some quality of life improvements, not the 18-inch gun. Interesting. Now, it would take a few years before it really started to see use in the field. It wasn't until around 2012, 2013. And what they would do with the original full-size guns that were already in service, these would eventually cycle down to reserves and eventually for even training purposes. Waste not, want not. Keep in mind, then, as of today, Israel still has plenty of M16A1s, CAR 15s, and all kinds of interesting guns in their inventory. So they're not going to get rid of the ones that they had. But the X95 here, well, that became the go-to thing. Actually, kind of around the same time that the semi-automatic SAR full-size came to the USA, 2013, 2014. So mine here, I tried to pattern off a newer IDF variant. And to that end, a lot of people said, well, you need the round forearm, the round handguard. That's true, you can do that. But this more squared off handguard with the removable rail covers is actually a version to update and they're, they're modular, they can come on and off. The, the round one was mostly intended for suppressor use when it was meant to be used as more of a submachine gun, a micro assault rifle. But when it was switched over to being more of a standard infantry rifle, this handguard appeared around 2014, 2015, allowing for more accessorization and, and things changed up, and so on and so forth. So what about the barrel? Why didn't I SBR do something else? Well, for the civilian market, we have to have a 16 and a half inch barrel. And like I said, the original Micro and the original X95 had a 13 inch barrel. Well, another change that they did after this started to see service, there would be the X95 II variant, which had a 15 inch barrel. So basically a CTAR length, uh, you know, that intermediate, because now that it's not just for close combat, and it's going to be for all kinds of things. They wanted to bump it out a few, a few more inches. So the original military being 13, the civilian being 16.5, okay, three and a half inches difference. It also originally came with a longer handguard that was about two and a half inches longer and a longer top rail. But when you do the 15, the difference is only an inch and a half I didn't feel like SBRing it for that if I'm going for more of that look. 
And to be fair, this gun needs all the help it can get in the accuracy department, which we'll talk about in a minute. So what I did is I took the shorter top rail and the shorter handguard from the SBR kit, put it on, and that actually saves some bulk and even quite a bit more weight than you might think. Still gave me room to put on an IWI foregrip, and I permanently attached the flash rider. Why did I do that? Well, I'm sure as most of you know, barrel length is not the only requirement in the USA. Overall length is required as well. 26 inches is the minimum. Even with the 16 and a half inch barrel, this gun with the removable flash rider was under 26 inches. Not by a lot, but just enough. So they gave it a thick rubber butt pad originally, which a lot of us weren't a fan of, cosmetically and ergonomically. Luckily, the original military butt pad was available. It's just a checkered, hard plastic polymer. And putting it on, if I had not permanently attached the flash rider, we would be at about 25, 25 and a half inches overall. The original MTAR X95 was around 23 inches. Some sources say 22 point something, some say 23 point something, yeah, 23 inches. When you bump it up to the 15 inch barrel version, it's around 25 inches, you know, 24 something, 25. So it's only a little bit longer and I'm okay with that, I really am. As far as everything else, it's pretty standard except a few accessories. So, second go with the X95. I think it would take. So yeah, you think it'll take what? I think it'll take a lot of practice to get really comfortable with this, but to me, this has a lot more potential than the Hellion. And reason being is this trigger is a lot more comfortable. Um, I do like what Misha's done with this grip here, although I would like it, it's kind of a, I am Batman. It's got a lot going on with it. I kind of like more of a simple grip but I do see a lot of working potential with being able to use this gun. I, I like the hand placement and the magazine, like what I was having issues with on the Hellion, the Tavor does not push on my forearm near as bad. I wanna flank you. So you can see here, it seats so much more. There's actually about an inch gap between my forearm and the mag. So first hot take. With additional shooting, I was interested to see how Fox would respond. I thought he might find this front end to be a little tight for his purposes but no he seemed to like it and i actually thought he would like this larger grip but as he said i think it's more of an aesthetic thing and so the fatter grip he didn't see well I, don't, I think he actually did like the fat grip but he would prefer it solid the thing is this is the enlarged idf version if you put on the standard grip panels they're smooth kind of this textured finish but they would be slimmer so yeah Oh well, I think it's interesting. You could also use these grip panels with the cutlass style trigger guard, but I kind of like the small trigger guard. But it's all modular, I really like that. Screws hold the grip panels on and one big screw holds this on. And as I said earlier, the hand guard's modular, the four, the top rail. Of course I've got a Meprolite RDS on here. I could have done the M21, I do have a couple, but this seemed a more fitting optic for such a close quarters gun. And we did test out, or he tested out, the flip up night sights. And this is actually the reason I have my red dot put here. That's as far back as you can do and still fold your rear sight. And this would of course be with the tritium inside in the front. And they do co-witness quite well. X95 again.
So Fox was talking about how he liked the magazine placement more than on the Hellion. This isn't going to be a versus video. We did one of those, Jay and I, in the past. It's probably about time we do an updated Bullpup versus video, but we only had of course limited space and time and several other things to do so this was only bullpup we brought out but it's, i'm happy to see um the mag release took him a little getting used to it, like he said it does a lot of people i think the big mistake they make is they try to push it straight in like a button and it's not it's a flapper if you take it and kind of hit the edge and push it down and forward it works a lot better And as he pointed out early on, the charging handle is uh, stiff, but it's actually very smooth. And I've always been very impressed with the trigger in the X95 II and the civilian version as well. It's the same trigger pack. I know some of the U.S. trigger packs are lighter, but what I've found with those, depending on the ammo type, if you go too light on your Tavor trigger, you sacrifice reliability. The lighter the trigger, the less oomph you might be hitting the firing pin with, and thus the primer of the cartridge. This splits the difference between being a quite nice trigger for a bullpup while still being 100% reliable. In fact, this gun has run everything, brass, steel. I should point out that in the IDF, several brigades use these, but the original TAR-21 is kind of around in a background role, but the M4, really the M4A1, and the older CAR-15 and, and whatnot, are still very much in use. In fact, back in 2021, it was reported that the IDF was retiring the X95 and going to the M4. Well, as we know today, that was kind of premature jumping the gun. True, they bought some AR types from America, but they were just buying extra guns. They still are ordering these. And in fact, late last year, there was a major contract to, I think it was India, it might have been Pakistan, but it was over on the subcontinent there for uh, quite a large number of Tavor types going out there. So these are still selling both at home and abroad. And uh, hope we see some new variants in America. Uh, the original one was announced in 2013. The uh, X95 was almost seven years ago to the day we're publishing this back in 2016. So, well, we do have the, the, the Tavor 7, but that's of less interest to me for different reasons. To me, uh, a bullpup is quite nice in 223 or 300 blackout, or 545 if you like, the compact size and all that. For 308, 762 NATO, I prefer a standard rifle. Part of it is I don't like having that big of an explosion right near my face, although I do trust IWI not to blow my face off, turning me into Two-Face. That actually gets to his Batman comment, which I never thought about before, but now that he said that about this grip, I'm never going to feel it the same again. So, thanks. But, um, yeah, I just think if you're going to do a, a 308, 308 gun, maybe a standard layout's a little better, more adjustment for the stock, you know, getting yourself in. So it's, uh, and that does kind of get to a final point. As much as Fox enjoyed the mag placement and some of the controls and, and the trigger, he did point out that this did not seem as accurate as the Springfield Hellion. And I think that does kind of bear some fruit. Some years ago, there was a big kerfuffle about X95s not being accurate. It was true, but it, you know, and this is going to shock you to learn, but the internet kind of blew it out of proportion. These were designed as submachine guns, and then they were kind of retrofit with version 2 into compact assault rifles. They were never meant to be 1MOA guns. Even in the U.S. military, if an M4 is, say, under 4 MOA, it, it passes mil spec. So when people were reporting these at 2.5 or even 3 MOA, that was probably still within spec and just fine for this gun's intended purpose. They were never meant to be super accurate. They were meant to be easy to handle in close quarters combat, in houses, urban situations, transporting in vehicles, helicopters, airplanes. And that's actually one reason a lot of the weight is intentionally in the back. That's one thing I noticed when these first came in, even the full size, compared to the AUG, this is intentionally balanced in the back so it can be handled with one hand and the, the front end can be maneuvered around very, very quickly. 
Now, I said this was for CQB. I should point out that the military X95 Micro X95 II did not have bayonet lugs. But the TAR-21, the original 18, in the military did. Kind of fun fact. It took an M7 bayonet, and we did show that in our previous video if you want to check that out. So, accuracy, yeah. And part of the thing is just the gun's design. Part of it is, is it's a removable barrel. You need a tool. The Hellion has a fixed barrel, which is good. So does thing like, the, you know, the FS2000. The AUG, it's QD, but yeah. I definitely think we should do an updated bullpup video and try to test for uh, accuracy, at least at practical ranges, as you heard in the shooting clips, Fox was hitting with steel with it. So even though the accuracy wasn't uh, target grade, it was, you know, minute of torso worthy. And the uh, sights and optic were working just fine for him, although I do believe I need to put another AA battery in this it seems like it's getting a little weak but that makes sense because we haven't had it out in a minute so to end it was as always 100 percent reliable it is a very interesting gun and i think once fox gets more range time with it he'll appreciate it but i think it'll also be good to have the other bull pups out to really compare apples to apples it's not really fair to compare this to other guns but it is Quite a bit more compact than in, say, an M4 carbine. You're you're looking at an M4s, you know, 35 inches, give or take, and uh, the Tavors at their shortest can be 22, 23, and at their longest are still under 29 inches. So that's not bad. Weight-wise, well, the lightest versions with no equipment on them can be as light as about six and a half pounds. When the X95 is considered the heaviest version, still under seven and a half pounds. If you throw in the TAR-21, you know, eight pounds, give or take. So, not chunky guns when you consider the weight of a modern M4A1 carbine. But yeah, I was really happy with the X95 when it came out, and I'm still happy today because it gives me what I want in a bullpup. A service-type gun that's as close to military as is legally possible. You can even buy the SBR kit with the short barrel if you want, you know, being all local and state, yada yada. Take standard AR-15 mags, so even if there's ever a mag ban, high capacity mags won't be an issue because there's so many of these out there. I love the modular pistol grip, not just the grip itself, but the panels, trigger guard, it can all be changed modular rail system can be it's a very changeable gun true it's not quick change in the field like say an AUG or some others but sit at home 20 30 minutes in front of the TV with the right tools you learn to work on them really quick they're also really easy to disassemble for cleaning push it I guess I should mention it's a three lug rotating bolt with uh, a uh, well, they call it a long stroke gas piston. I guess it is. It's almost an intermediate stroke gas piston in my opinion, but we'll, we'll, we'll call it a long stroke. But a gas piston system, uh, it's self-regulating. It's non-adjustable. It is what it is. This is, of course, in 5.56, 223. It has a 1 in 7 twist, chrome-lined, cold hammer forged barrel. The IDF uses both 55 grain and 62 grain ammo, so it kind of needed to be able to utilize either or. They're a serious military that may have to work with any equipment they're given. It's quite ambidextrous. Charging handle can be switched to either side. Mag catch is on both sides automatically. Safety can be switched to either side. So, and of course the, the port can be switched left or right. So a gun can be configured for either side, but it's not ambidextrous out of the box like say the um, Beretta ARX-160, or even the Hellion. The Hellion is pretty MB-friendly right out of the box, although it, it too needs a little bit of adjustment. Of course, your mag release, bolt release, bolt release is here. Mag release is again way up here. But it just seemed like a time to bring this out, and I've been teasing Fox with it for way too long, and um, overall, he seemed to enjoy it, and the gun did not give us any grief with uh, steel mags, alloy mags, or... Um, you know, P mags, which is what they ship with now. So, what do you think? Uh, I know the X95 made a huge splash when it hit the market years ago, but kind of quiet these days. But I still really appreciate it for what it is, and uh, wouldn't mind getting some more accessories or even a new variant one day. 
if there's anything worth uh, worth picking up. It's a unique design and has seen quite a bit of use around the world. Well, yesterday felt like spring. Today, not so much, but I'm sure spring will be here soon. I hope everyone's doing well. As I said at the beginning, if you could, please like, share, subscribe. And if you'd really like to help support us, we could really use it right now. Donating a, a buck and up on Patreon really would go a long way. And we have been talking seriously about starting to try to do live streaming. Just understand in my particular position, that's a little harder than for other people. But you know what? We'll figure a way to do it eventually. But for now, Patreon helps out a lot. Because who knows if this video will be monetized or not. Probably not. <laughs> Anyway, appreciate you hanging out today. Best wishes. Fox and I will have Q&A up very soon. And we will catch you very soon again next time.